Hello and welcome back. In today's tutorial, we're going to learn how to calculate cumulative discount or commission in Power BI. First, let's talk about what a cum cumulative discount. So the uh, formula will work exactly the same for discount or a commission. So from now on, I'm just going to say discount. But if you're trying to calculate a sales commission, the formulas and everything else will be exactly the same. So what's a cumulative discount? Well, cumulative discount is a little bit different from the progressive discount. Progressive discount takes your amount, breaks it into a bunch of buckets, and applies a different percentage to each bucket, uh, similar to how the income tax works in the United States. The way the cumulative discount works is a little bit different, it's a little bit easier to, to deal with. Basically what it does, it's gonna take a look at the overall amount spent in the discount window, in the window that we're trying to tax or calculate the discount for, uh, sums the whole, uh, all of the amounts, uh, in our case invoice amounts, takes a sum of that, and then depending on where that falls in the scale, is going to apply a, an appropriate discount percentage. Let me take a look at the specific example. So first let's talk about how we might set up that discount table so we can track. Number one is we need to specify the discount for what customer. So in this, in this case we have customer one. Then we're going to specify the window for the discount and that could be from September in this case to end of March. So you might have uh, a window that spans a year. You might have a window that takes the entire year from January 1 to December 31st or you might have a couple of discount windows per year. So that's what the next two columns do. They specify from from and to date where the discount is active. Then you need to specify the brackets. Basically what you're saying here is within this window from 91 to 331, if my overall amount was $40,000, give the discount 0%. If my amount, cumulative amount is from 40,001 to $55,000, the discount is 10%, 15%, 20%. What's good about this table is that it allows you to set up a different discount for a schedule for different customers. So for example, here, I have brackets 0 to 40, 40 to 55, 55 to 65, and over 65. The next one is completely different. So you can see for customer two, let me scroll up a little bit. My window is 0 to 50, 50 to 75, 75 to 90, 90 and above. I just use a really, really not large number at the end of the brackets. So what I've done is I've set up three customers with different uh, schedules, different cumulative amounts, and different percentages. So you could, this, is, this setup is very flexible. It allows you to set up a particular customer in a very different way and have as many brackets as, as you want. And then it also allows you to do the following. If you wanna have a catch all, so for example, you're gonna have very specific schedule for customer one, two, and three, and then every other customers to go into other. Then what we do in our case, we just say minus one for other, and then we set up a bracket for minus for all other customers. So in our case, the bracket is 0 to 25k, 25 to 50, 50 to 75, and then over 75, and the discounts is 0, 10, 15, and 20%. Now let's take a look at our model. As you can see, we have an invoice sales, and invoice sales is the table that captures what the invoices were by customer by date, and then we have our customer dimension, and we have our date dimension, and we have the discount table that captures effective from effective to customer and the discount. And just so you guys have a flavor of what the data looks like for the invoice, uh, you could see this in this table. It's just the customer, date, invoice number, and the invoice amount. And I could click on different customers and see the invoices, invoice amounts for all of those customers. And before I get too far, this is a tutorial, which means that in the description of this video, I will post a link to my blog. And if you go to my blog, you can download this model, and then you can take a look at all the calculations, the data, and practice on your own. The goal of this tutorial is the following. What we want to do is we want to go through all of the invoice that we have for every customer. And if an invoice falls within our discount window to and from, then what we want to do is we want to calculate the cumulative sales and then see how much of a discount I need to apply for this invoice. So you can see that we now have a invoice discount amount column added to our invoice table. And then we can see how we're calculating that invoice amount and you could kind of quickly test this. The way you test this is, you know that our window is from 9.1 to 3.31, 3 
and you could see that unless the dates are within that period, uh, we don't have any in discount uh, amount calculated. So all, if we do have an amount, it always falls into um, a window between September 1 and March 31st. Now let's talk about the logic that we are going to be implementing in this tutorial. So our logic is the following. We're gonna go through all of the records and all of the invoices in our invoice table. For every record, we're gonna see, we're gonna take a look at the date. And then knowing the date and knowing the customer, we're gonna look up in our discount table and see if there exists a range that corresponds to this date range, that date amount. And if it does exist, we're gonna then calculate the cumulative amount for that range. Then knowing that amount, we're gonna look up the discount percent and then we're gonna apply this discount percent to the invoice amount. So we're gonna add one more column in the invoice table with the discount amount column. So now you see that I've added invoice discount date from and invoice discount date to. So basically these are the two variables that I've created, two measures, that calculate that uh, upper and lower bound for our discount window. So you could see that if our dates are not within the window, which is again, September 1 to March 31. Then we see that these values are blank. And then as I scroll down, we see that the minute this date is 9-8, so it's within our window, we're gonna specify the, the lower and upper bound. So 9-1-19 to 3-31-20. So let's take a look at the DAX for those calculations. So we're, we're gonna start with the invoice discount date from. So basically what we're gonna do is for every row in the invoice table, we know what the current invoice date is, and we also know who the current customer is. So now what we need to do is we're gonna go into our discount table, and then in the discount table, see if we can find a corresponding discount window. And that's what this uh, return calculate statement does. So let's go through the DAX. As you can see, the way the DAX works is we're gonna go to our discount table and we're gonna apply a filter. So we're gonna filter out all of the things that do not make sense for the current date customer combination. So the first thing that we're gonna do is work with the date. So we're gonna say, okay, take a look at our discount table and show me all of the rows that where from is before the selected date and two is after the selected date. So it's gonna find all of the windows that satisfy our selected day criteria. Now the only thing we need to do is to make sure that it's gonna look up the correct customer. And the way that will work is we're gonna apply additional AND criteria where we're gonna check for the current customer. So if we find a customer selected date combination, then we can then know that such a discount window exists for this customer. Now remember that we also have a catch all other that's how OR works. OR will do first the customer that we want to look up and it'll find whatever corresponds to that customer. If it cannot find this customer, then only then will it do the OR and it's gonna do a fallback, it's gonna do the other. So when this uh, works, then it's gonna shrink our discount table to only those rows that correspond to the date and the selected customer. If the table is maintained correctly, that should only correspond to one row. But just to be sure, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look up the max value for the effective from, and that's gonna return us the lower bound for the discount window. The calculation for the upper bound for the window, so the two date, works exactly the same. The only thing is we're doing the effective two lookup, and we're gonna calculate the minimum, the earliest one. So now we have those two calculated, and you can see that they work very well. Uh, as we take a look at the date, we can see that it calculates the window very well. So only the date ranges that fall within our, our September 1, March 31st bound, only those have the value for inventory discount date from and to. Now I had to do a couple of things just to make it a little bit easier to follow. So what I've done, instead of writing a very long uh, ginormal, ginormous multi-page calculation, I broke that calculation into individual measures and I added those measures into the invoice folders under the metrics. So those calculations are only meant to be used as we add a new column to our invoice table. You should not be using them for anything else. So 
uh, I could probably just hide them, technically speaking, so the end user should never even see those calculations. I'm not hiding them for this tutorial, just so it's easier for you guys to find them. So now that I have the from and to dates for our discount window, I know the customer. And uh, the next thing I need to figure out what was the cumulative amount of sales or invoice sales from that customer in the discount window. Let's calculate and figure out how that measure works. So let's take a look at this calc. So we're calculating the cumulative sales given the discount window where we found ourselves in. So what we need to do is we're going to cache the selected customer. So don't forget that this will be executed one row at a time in the invoice table, in effect table. So what we need to do is the following. First, before we calculate the cumulative sales, we need to make sure that our date and from fields are not empty, which means that there is no match in the discount table, which means there's no discount, which means there's no point to do anything. So if uh, they are not blank, then we're going to calculate our cumulative sales. The way this will work is we have a measure gross sales that just does a sum of all of the sales in the invoice table. So we're going to sum those up, but we need to only sum those up as long as they match our discount window criteria. So what are those criteria? So let's see how we do this. So we're going to apply an all filter on invoice sales. So remove all of the filters and we're going to put our own filter on it. So the filter go like this. We're going to say that in our invoice sales table, look at all of the sales for the selected customer and also make sure that the date of those sales is before the discount date window, uh, greater or equal or to the from date and less than equal to the to date, which means it's going to sum all of the sales for the discount window in which that invoice falls into. So let's see if this calculation works. So again, the rows where we do not have any discounts, all of these measures return blank. As we scroll down, we see that this row here is for 9.8, which is within our window. We have our from and to dates. And now we've calculated what was the cumulative amount, and you see that it's the same amount for all invoices because we're trying to understand in what bucket we need to be using to look up our percentage for discount. So all of these invoices for the same customer, as long as they're falling into the same discount window, will have the same cumulative sales. And now that we have our from date, to date, cumulative date amount calculated, we can do the lookup and figure out what the exact percentage is for the discount. So the first thing what we're gonna do is we're gonna cache those values into the variables. So we have our date from, date to, cumulative sales, and then what customer it is. And these are the four columns that we need to do to look up the discount percentage. And now that we have the uh, variables cached, we could just do our return statement. Again, we're going to check to make sure that our dates are not empty. And if they are, we know that this count percentage will be nothing because there is no matching discount for that situation, that invoice. And now we're going to go and look up our discount. So the first thing that we're going to do, so we're going to be looking at the discount uh, column in the discount table. So that returns a percent. And then we're just going to apply all of those filters to find what that discount is. So we're going to go to our discount table and say, find the record where the, it starts on the same from date. It ends on the same to date. It's looking up our customer if it can find it. And if it's not, it's going to try to look for the other. So that's where we have or. And also we're going to do this bucket for amount from and amount to. So if you remember, our discount is tiered. So depending on what your cumulative sales are, we're going to have a corresponding record for that. So it's going to check test for lower and upper bound, find that one record. In our case, again, I'm using max. You should only have one if you set up your table correctly. But just to make sure we put max so that we can return that one value. So now I have added the discount percent calculation to our table just to test it again. So you can see that for customer A, all of these invoices within our range get a 15% discount. If I click on customer B, customer B also gets 15%. Sorry, that was cost. So if I click on customer C, customer C gets 30%. 
customer B gets 15%, customer A gets 15%, customer E again 15, and customer D gets 10. So again, we're doing it by invoice for every invoice, and for every invoice, we're applying a correct schedule, correct discount parameters, uh, giving the customer and the, the period that that invoice falls into. Over time, your discount table will have multiple different effective ranges, and uh, our logic is very robust to be able to maintain the history of discounts and properly apply those discounts to customer invoices. So now let's take a look at overall report and see what's going on. So here in this chart, I have the gross sales and net sales, and you could see that our gross sales are only over net sales within our window from September to March. Otherwise, our gross sales and net sales are exactly the same, so that's another good check. In this chart, I'm just trending all of our discount and the effective discount. An effective discount, I'm just looking at the net sales versus gross sales and do the calculation there. So you could see it changes from anywhere from 25 to 15%. However, within that window, each customer will only have one percentage, discount percentage. So if I click on a customer, you see that these are all of the discounts applied, discount amount, totally, total discounts, sum of all of the discounts. And you could see that the, the percentage is the same across all of the months. It's different for different customers. So customer C has 30% discount here. Customer E has 15%. Customer D has 10%. So each customer would have a different discount percent uh, as long as it falls into the discount window. And uh, here we could see the, again, the effective, the effective discount percent. So here we are. I think this is about it for this calculation. You could find the Power BI model in if you follow the link in the description of the video. If you're trying to calculate commission based on, on cumulative discount, the logic will be exactly the same. Uh, let me know if you guys would like me to tackle the progressive discount or commission calculation in future videos. Thank you for stopping by and I hope to see you come back soon. Bye.